In 1956 and 1957, Clive Berry's property known as Pretty Gully, near Urala, would suffer stock losses of roughly 340 sheep to a mysterious predator he stated was in no way feral dogs or dingoes due to its hunting method differing from that of the two canids. According to Berry, dogs typically grab any part of the sheep, usually the kidneys, and similarly to how he put it, don't mind messing up the wool. Meanwhile, similarly to other incidences we'll talk about later, the kills by whatever this predator was were much cleaner and more clinical in nature compared to dog attacks. In the years 1958 to 1952, more and more sightings would be reported in New South Wales of what would become known as the Emmerville Panther due to the town of Emmerville being at the epicentre of it all. Mrs. Stan Godley would send plaster casts of supposed footprints to Sir Edward Holstrom of the Taronga Park Trust, who said that the casts in no way resembled a dog or dingo's footprints, and were similar in size to those of Raja, a nine-foot-long Bengal tiger living at the Taronga Zoo at the time. After the 1958-1962 cat flap, the Emmerville Panther would quickly become known as a local legend and tourist attraction, with the welcome sign outside the town having the profile of a panther on it, and a pub would also be named after the cryptid. The Emmerville General Store's Facebook page also has a panther with a helmet on its head as its profile picture. After 1962, the sightings would stop, but in 1969 and 1973, the panther would return. According to Smith 2021, page 193, the brief period the sightings were reported seems to indicate transient individuals rather than a fixed breeding population in the area. According to Healy and Cropper 1994, page 59, despite the media referring to the animal in the singular sense for journalistic reasons, sightings indicate that it was more likely there was multiple melanistic leopards or jaguars stalking Emmerville and surrounding neighbourhoods in New South Wales. In a video upload on Michael Williams' YouTube channel, the description states that the footage shown was filmed in the 1980s near an abandoned mine. In the video, you can hear the people filming saying it's a lion or a tiger, which if so, appears to be white. This is a mutation known in both animals, but it is very rare. For me, the footage is a little hard to make out, so I can imagine someone saying the typical joke of mandatory blurry images and footage for cryptids. I remember my dad saying it looks like a horse or a goat with something dangling off its rear, but I'll let you guys decide. Gubba was a name given to an animal making loud screams terrorising the community of Canimbla Valley in the 1910s or sometime around there. According to Williams and Lang 2010, page 74, author Bernard O'Reilly recalls it in his popular book documenting his childhood growing up in the region, titled Cullen Benbong. In the book, Bernard describes the screams as being so terrifying, horses ran upon hearing it, with their riders not arguing with them, and the dogs being terrified for days after hearing it, and shaking bushmen to the core for three generations. These screams were only happening at night, and he speculated that the animal might be some sort of beast that came out in the night and retreated before daybreak into the caverns of nearby mountains. Going off of reading Williams and Lang 2010, pages 74 to 75, it seems like no one at the time was game to try and venture into the caves looking for it. And by the looks of it, we might never know what Gubba was, due to Bernard reportedly writing in his book at the time of publication that Gubba hadn't been heard for roughly 30 years, meaning that if Gubba was a real animal, it's most likely long gone or potentially it might have migrated to a new area. Also, I'd like to mention that according to Williams and Lang 2010, pages 74 to 75, the word Gubba was also used by Aboriginals as a term for the Yowie, certain species of wildlife in the area, and white men. According to someone I know in real life, it also translates into English as white and is one of the worst things you can say in the Aboriginal language.